there is several reasons I am connected with this film. Uh, first of all, and I think it's very nice to have it here in the 15th anniversary of the of the festival because, um, as you see, as you know, probably uh, Amos Vogel was the founder of the film festival, New York Film Festival, and in his book "Film as a Subversive Art: Late Door" with Anchin Andalou, are considered uh, one of the two landmark of subversive films. You know, especially because of historical reasons, there is a lot of films in the 60s he talks about. But the ones that really can start this tradition of being subversive, being anti-bourgeois, being anti-clerical, being against all values, also formal and narrative values, I think that are these two films by Buñuel. Uh, second reason to be connected with this film, because uh, modestly I contribute to the French uh, new edition of the Amos Vogel book. Uh, I wrote the prologue and I encourage a lot to do a new, not translation, but a revision of the translation of the first edition from the 70s. So for me, I was very, very proud of being uh, linked with, with uh, the book of Famous Vogel, that for me is the best book ever written about cinema. So for reason. Second reason is because I am from Spain. I was born in the north, east, up north in Barcelona, next to the border of France. And my grandparents and myself, I was born 20 kilometers away from Dalí's place, you know, Figueres where there is the museum, and my grandparents are from Figueres, the, the same village. So I know, I know the, and I have been collaborating a lot. In fact, I organized a retrospective of the, of the Dali's work, but the, the 60s, the, the films he made on the 60s, very obscure and strange films he made on the 60s for the Documenta in Castle, you know, the art event, the art uh, event in 2012. So okay, I know I heard also the Dali's work. Here, we cannot talk properly about the Dali collaboration. There has been a lot of controversy about how much you know, of the value of the ideas of the film have been from Dali or from Buñuel. Apparently, uh, they, had some, they share some ideas one day some, for some days in cada case, but they never developed in a proper script as they did in a, uh, in a great harmony with the previous film, Anchien um, Andalou. So apparently, Buñuel, left uh, with some of these ideas and he prepared alone the script and also he did the film together. In the previous film, they were collaborating and they were both on the shooting in this one. And I think that maybe this cr the craziness, a little bit more craziness of the first one, you know, it's due to, to this particular dialectics between the two guys, very different personalities, very, uh, very, I don't know how to say, but that in very, very, very different characters. And, uh, but that in the first film, and Shin Andalou, I don't know, something harmonious and totally magic happened. And well, it's as happens with some artists at the beginning of their careers, then jealousy or, I don't know, Ambai or whatever, you know, put some strange things between the two and they never met again and they never, you know, became friends. But still, in this, uh, and I think it's very important, there is the anti-bourgeois thing, obviously. There is the anti-clerical, what is very, Nowadays, it's very funny or very moving to see a film that is anti-clerical. You know, it's so far from what we know. And you know, but nowadays, nobody, everybody is bourgeois. Nobody is interested in religion or in you know, in the clerical aspect anymore. So to have these two elements, you know, together in a film, uh, I think it's very interesting. But there is another aspect that uh, sometimes it's not very, uh, it's not underlined. Uh, uh, with the previous film and another one, and also with this one, is that these are very, very Spanish films. You know, all the poetry, all the, I don't know, all the elements, you know, even if it's considered a landmark of surrealism film and it was produced in France, part of the thing was not shooted in France, from what I remember, but you know, the spirit, it's very, very, I don't know, very radical, but that uh, in, in a way that only Spanish people you know, it's very violent and it's very, you know, I remember one beautiful sentence from, from Dali uh, or Buñuel, I don't remember. One of, of these two said, you know, the French were so posh and so bourgeois, they, they, they need, they were asking for, you know, a great piece of meat, you know, a, a bloody meat of truth. You know, a great, a great, I would translate, okay, a great piece of bloody a great piece of meat of bloody truth on the table, or something like that. 
you know so this was the the thing the french people you know with this exquisite and sophisticated approach to surrealism they were they were asking for so they delivered this with the uh, these two films and also and this is coming i think and it's very interesting from marquis de Sade, that is as you will see at the end of the film you know the vindication of the subversive totally subversive aspect the arbitrary this idea here it's a little bit more about love you know this idea of a more love a more fool you know the crazy love that has no bro knows no borders no frontiers the total anarchy the arbitrary total arbitrary aspect of love you know in, in its purest uh, way but it's inspired of this idea of also totalitarianism of desire of marquis de Sade. The idea of that also the arbitrary <coughs> side of this impulse extremely singular that it's desire so with this inspiration i think in mind or with this i don't, I don't know if inspiration but this example you know this role model that was for them marquis de Sade, and for all surrealists and for all subversive people after him you know they tried to create the same thing with the idea that it's uh, i think it's fine it's very interesting they considered Marquis de Sade as a machine of taking off ideas. Mm -hmm. you know, the, usually, people try to put ideas on films, put ideas on book, try to develop things. But for them, Marquis de Sade, with this repetition, with this idea of the, the automatism, of the serialism, of the totally arbitrary and totally unfair, uh, and, you know, all plots are based on injustice, unfair situations, you will see here and also in Los Olvidados, you know, how they uh, treat blind people, for example, you know, this kind of subversive aspect of maltreat, uh, badly treat, you know, for example, uh, blind people. So this idea of that a film should destroy ideas, should kill ideas, also narratively, I think that uh, for them was very important and combined with this poetry, the Spanish poetry, the violence, combined with also the exquisite or the sophisticated, you know, uh, combination of images, no, and the, the edit, and that it's always, you know, you never know what is the connection exactly in between the one scene or one image the, and the next one or the previous one, you know. But also, but it's also like a poem, like a real, real sophisticated poem, but always disturbing, always a little bit more unpredictable. Never, you can never, never, you know, follow it in a perfect way. There is always a mystery inside, and I think that it's uh, still nowadays. It's something very, now maybe for us it's not so subversive, but it's moving aesthetically. You know? Maybe this is the great value we will be able to, to feel tonight. So I think that all these elements are still there, are still alive. And okay, it's a, it's a great example of uh, pioneers of almost everything in moving image, in filmmaking. Unfortunately, you know, as a show business, uh, cinema has become something else and maybe the example of Dali and Buñuel was not, has not been followed in, a, you know, in, all its, in all its potential. I think nowadays, you know, some people it's recovering, uh, it's, it's going back to these ideas. But okay, you know, uh, there is this uh, incredible book by Amos Vogel that really, you know, established another truth. And, you know, as you said, for example, I don't know, Stendhal or a lot of, you know, writers were totally dismissed in their times and you know 100 years later they are the only important you know and all the other people that was very famous on their times i don't know maybe we're looking here at some filmmakers famous filmmakers from the past that maybe in 100 years nobody will talk about these people and everybody will still talk about Leishdor, about buñuel and about the lead so i can guarantee you that this has uh, really, really high possibilities to happen. So um, I will not say any name, but uh, forget a lot of the filmmakers that are very successful and very famous and very even well priced and regarded by the main institutions because nobody will remember them in the future. <laughs> but I can guarantee this you will not forget and nobody will forget. So enjoy and see you soon. Thank you.